Okay, hopefully this works and it doesn't give that same error again now. Okay, so that was example one. That's the, if you have two angles on one side. Um, the next case that I deal with is the ASS case. Um, and that's if you know one angle and two sides, and the, the second side is opposite the first angle. So SAS will be a different case that we'll deal with later. Um, so this is case we know one angle on the opposite side. We can use the law of sines to find the angle opposite the other known side. So if we know one angle, two sides, we can use these two. These, yeah, let me draw a picture. <laughs> If we know alpha A and B, right, alpha is opposite A, and we want to find this angle beta, we can use the fact that sine alpha over A is sine beta over B. And if we know what alpha A and B are, we can find what beta is using that formula. So in this situation, we can always find this angle first. Once we found this angle, then we go about finding this angle using the fact they all add to 180 degrees. And then we can go about finding that last side. Um, there is one thing that's really annoying about the ASS case, is that the sometimes there's actual two possible answers. And the reason is because if I get something like this, if I solve this thing, and I get sine beta equals 0 0.7, there's actually two different angles beta which have the same sign. And the reason for that is, if you look at your unit circle, these two angles here, both this angle beta here and that angle beta there will have the same sign. Um, the other thing that can happen is you can get something like this. Sine beta equals 1.3. And this thing, there's no angle beta which has that sign. And the reason is because um, you cannot have a sign be bigger than 1. Sine beta is always between negative 1 and 1. So both those situations can come up when dealing with these ASS triangles, and that's why they're called ASS triangles, because they're annoying. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so yeah, if, that, if you get sine alpha or sine beta or whatever bigger than 1, so equals 1.3, you cannot get any triangles at all, you cannot solve the triangle. If you have something between 0 and 1, there's going to be two possible values for the angle beta or the angle alpha. You have to do each of them separately. Sometimes one of those two guys won't work. Sometimes one of those two guys will be, give you a negative number for the third angle, in which case you know that one doesn't work. You only have one possible answer. So these triangles, the ASS triangles, sometimes there's one answer, sometimes there's two answers, sometimes there's no answers at all. Um, and each situation is going to be slightly different. So I'm going to do a couple of these situations. Um, I'm going to do one where there's one answer, one where there's, and one where there's, no, sorry, one where there's no answers, one where there's one answer. So the first one here, example two, we have one angle is 27 degrees, uh, one side is 75, and the, the side opposite the other angle is 34. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to find that angle. Since that angle is opposite side C, that angle is gamma. So sine alpha over A equals sine gamma over C. Alpha is 27 degrees. C is 75. So if we do sine 27, divided by 34, 0 0.0133. And if we multiply both sides by 75, we get this. And you'll notice that this number here is bigger than 1 which means there is no such angle as gamma. So if we ever get a situation where we have sine theta is bigger than 1, sine or cosine something is bigger than 1, you cannot solve the situation. You cannot solve the triangle. There's no solution to that situation. 
Oh, great. The recording's working so far. That's a good sign. Okay. Example three. Sorry, any questions about example two before I move on to example three? Here we have a triangle. Where gamma is 73.01, A is 7. Actually, I'm just going to round these all off. It's really not going to affect the answer by that much. 73 degrees, 17, 20. Again, this is now, oh, yeah, this is now A. This is gamma, and C is opposite, so this guy is alpha up there. And the alpha is going to be the first thing we find, because we have this and this, and we'll find that. So we use the fact that sine alpha over A is sine gamma over C. A is 17. Gamma is 73. If we continue that, we get that sine alpha over 17 is sine 73 divided by 20, which is 0 0.047, or 0 0.048, actually, if you round it up. Uh, multiply that by 17. We get that sine alpha is 0 0.812. Now, the idea is that when we have a situation like that, sine alpha equals 0 0.812, and we want to solve that situation, so there's actually going to be two different angles which both have that same sign, the sine of 0 0.812. They both have a y coordinate in a circle of 0 0.812. This first one, is going to be this. If we do sine inverse of 0 0.812, that'll give you the smaller of the two angles. This second one here is going to be 180 degrees minus whatever that angle is. It's going to be 180 degrees minus sine inverse 0 0.812. So let's do those two things. 0.812. So 54.3. So that one's 54.3 degrees. And if we do 180 minus 54.3, 125.7 degrees. So these are the two possible values for this angle here. And we have to, at this point, we have to deal with each of those separately. So the 54.3 I'll deal with here, the 125.7 I'll deal with over there. So are any questions about how to do those calculations, how I got those angles? Everyone's okay with that so far? Sometimes these questions can get fairly long, so I just want to check that. Okay. So. Um, what was I going to say about 54.3? Um, yes, yeah, sorry. So in this situation, the next thing we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find this third angle there. So we have 73 plus 54.3 plus whatever the third angle is that has to add up to 180. So 73 plus 54.3, 127.3. So 127.3 plus beta is 180. So here beta is 180, 180 minus 127.3, which is 52.7. Okay, that calculation works. 
Now what happens if we do the 127.5? We'll have 73 plus 125.7 plus theta equals 180. 73 plus 125.7 is 198.7. And we'll see here, if we have 198.7 plus beta equals this, beta is going to be a negative answer. 180 minus 198.7. Negative 18.7. And an angle cannot, in this, in a triangle, an angle cannot be negative. So that situation will not work. The last thing we need to do is we need to finish solving this triangle. If this situation did work, we would need to finish solving that triangle as well. But this situation does not work, which means that alpha is 54.3, beta is 52.7, and the only thing now that we have found is that third side. And so find the third side, I will do sine beta over B equals sine gamma over C. Um, actually, I'm just going to erase this whole case that I said is not going to work. It's not going to work. I use it to make another column there. So sine beta over B is sine gamma over C. So sine of 52.7 over B is Oh, B is what we were looking for. There we go. Sine 73 over 20. Okay, the query is still working. Sine 73 divided by 20. 0 0.0478. And sine 52.7, sorry. 0 0.7 basically 0 0.8, multiply both sides by B, 0 0.8 is 0 0.0478B, so B is 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.0478, 16.7. And there we go. We have now solved this triangle. We found the unknown angle, that was 54.3. We found this angle, which was 52.7, and we found the third side, which is 16.7. One thing to mention, um, in the book and on the web assignment, they always write the questions out like this. If I give you something like this on the test, I will actually draw a picture of it for you. Um, I'll actually create it with something like this. I'd like to say, solve that triangle, just so, yeah. Because I'm, I like making quite my questions more visual. The textbook authors don't, um, and the web assigned questions are taken directly from the textbook, but, yeah. Um, okay. Any questions before we move on to 7.2? Okay. So I'm going to do 15 minutes of 7.2, um, and then we're going to finish off. Um, one thing to mention, I've realized I'm going to need to give an extension on the web assignment for this week. It is due on Saturday right now. I have not finished. 7.2 is on there, and I'm just barely starting 7.2 now, so I'm going to finish it tomorrow, and so Saturday is not going to be enough time. So I'm going to go, probably give an extension until Monday on the web assignment for this week. Um, yeah. So 7.2 deals with what's called the law of cosines. It's another law that we can use to solve triangles. It's also on your formula sheet. Um, I'm not going to draw the picture of that one on the board. I'll draw pictures on later just to save time. But again, it's also useful to find sides and angles in triangles, and that's what it's useful for. Um, so there's some triangles in which the laws of sines will not work to solve the triangle. And in those situations, you need another law called the law of cosines. The law of cosines is a lot more annoying formula-wise. The law of cosines looks like that. And there's three different versions of it. The first one, the one that allows you to find A. second one allows you to find B. third one is the one that allows you to find C. So there's those three different sides of the triangle. Um, again, those are on your formula sheet. There's no need to memorize those. Those are the three different versions of the law of cosines. Um, now, one thing to mention about those three formulas, the first formula only involves the angle alpha. 
Second formula only involves the angle beta. Third formula only involves the angle gamma. So, if, so knowing which formula to use is going to depend upon which angle we're trying to find and or which angle we already know. The situation where we already know one angle and only one angle, find the formula that uses that angle. In a situation where we're trying to find a specific angle, use the formula with that angle in it. So if we're trying to find a side and we know one angle, use that formula. If, we're tr if we are trying to find an angle and we know the sides, use that formula. Um, so the first case that we use the law of cosines for is what's called the SAS case, where we have two sides and the angle between those two sides. So a situation like this, we know this side, this side, and the angle between. We're going to use the law of cosines. What we're going to do is we're going to find this side first. Um, and use the law of cosines with this angle to find that side. Once we know what this side is, we can find the other two angles really easily. The nice thing about the SAS case is it's not going to... Um, oh, yes, sorry. The other thing to mention. So when we're finding these two angles, we're going to use the law of sines to find the angle. And when you use law of sines to find angles, you get that annoying situation that came up in the ASS case, where there's sort of sometimes just two possible angles that work. Um, to prevent that annoying situation, we always find the angle opposite the smallest side first. And if we do that, the angle opposite the smallest side will never be bigger than 90 degrees. That's a rule in triangles. That the only possible angle that can be bigger than 90 degrees is the angle opposite the largest side. side. So if we always find the angle opposite the smallest side first, it'll never be bigger than 90 degrees. We'll never have to worry about having two different possible angles. So. so here's an example of solving a triangle using this idea. Here we know that one of the angles is 45 degrees. Side on one side is 10, side on the other side is 15. I'm just going to say this is B, this is A, but that angle is gamma. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to find that side opposite. We're going to try to find the side C. When we do that, we're going to use the second version of the law of cosines. Is this the second? Yes, this is our third one. There we go. That's the version we're going to use. C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine gamma. So A squared is 15 squared. B squared is 10 squared. Um, it's 15 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 15 times cosine of 45 degrees. Um, 15 squared, 225. 10 squared is 100. 2 times uh, 2 times 10 times 15 times cosine uh, 45 is 212. So we have 225, 225 plus 100 minus 212. So c squared is 113, which means we can take the square root of that. 10.63. That's how long the side c is. Okay, we know what this guy is. Now we're going to try to find one of the other two angles. Let, um, and now the question now is which of these two is smaller? This one is smaller, so we're going to try to find this angle first. This is smaller, so we're going to try to find that angle first, that beta first. So sine beta over B equals sine gamma over C. So sine beta over 10 is Gamma is 45, C is 10.63, um, divided 
by 10 chances. Zero point zero six six five. So sine theta is 0 0.665. And if we do sine of this, we get the answer. Theta turns out to be 41.7 degrees. And there's one more thing we still need to find, which is the last angle up here. We do that using the fact that all the angles add up to 180. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180. Alpha is, no, alpha is what we don't know. Beta is 41.7. Gamma is 45. So alpha plus 88.7 equals 180. Alpha is what? 180 minus 88.7, 91.3. So we know what alpha is, we know what beta is, we know what C is. Any questions about this guy? In the eight minutes that are left, I've got one more thing to do, which is the SSS case. There's a last case, last situation for solving a triangle. Um, that's the case when we don't know any of the angles, we only know all three sides. We can still solve the triangle using that situation, we use the law of cosines. Um, and again, we can actually pick whatever law of cosines we want to use. Any of those formulas will give you an answer. Um, it'll find any of the angles we've got. Um, then we can use law of sines to find one of the other two angles and then find the third angle by using the fact that um, sines all add up to what so angles all add up to 180. Again, usually when we use the law of sines, always use the law of sines with the smallest sign and the angle opposite it. It'll guarantee you that angle is going to be acute. It's going to be less than 90 degrees. You're not going to have to worry about that ambiguous case. Now, it is also possible to have an SSS situation where there's no possible triangle that exists. That's what happens if we get like cosine alpha equals 1.3. Right? If we do this SSS situation, we'll end up having cosine alpha equals something. If that thing's bigger than 1, smaller than negative 1, there's going to be no solution. No possible value. So, so here we have 10, 15, 12 three sides of a triangle. Um, alpha, beta, gamma are the three angles. So I'm going to use the one for alpha. One for alpha says a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. a squared is 10 squared b squared is 15 squared, c squared is 12 squared, um, 12, 15, cosine alpha, so here we have 100, 225, 144, 2 times 12 times 15 is 360, so minus 360, Cosine alpha. I'm going to move the 360 cosine alpha over here, the 100 over here. I'll get 360 cosine alpha equals 225 plus 144 minus 100. 269. So cosine alpha equals 26. 6, 9 divided by 360, which is 0 0.747. So 
So they, they want to find what alpha is. I use cos inverse. So I have cosine alpha equals something. We can find alpha using cos inverse. So cos inverse 0 0.747 is 41.65. OK, you've now got one of the angles. Next, I'm going to try to find the angle gamma. Again, because of the two sides that are left, the side opposite gamma is smaller. So I get sine gamma over C equals sine alpha over A. So sine gamma over 12 equals sine 41.65 over A is 10. So sine 41.65 divided by 10, 0 0.0665. So sine gamma 0 0.066 times 12, 0 0.797, and then I've got to do sine inverse of that, 52.9. And then, now that I have what alpha is, I have what gamma is, I can use the fact that all three angles add up to 180 to find the last one. Alpha is 41.65, beta is unknown, gamma is 52.9. So beta plus 41.65 plus 52.9, 94.55 equals 180. So beta is 180 minus 94.55, 85.45. And there we go. We finished solving the triangle. Um, again, I went through that last one fairly quickly because I realized we were running out of time. Um, Again, I'm going to finish off, so tomorrow's class, I'll finish off 7.1 7.2. I will start section 8.1. Um, again, I'm a little bit behind. I want to make sure I have at least Friday next week for a review. That's why I want to make sure I start chapter 8 tomorrow. I will give an extension on the web assign. And last thing, I have marked quizzes. So in the two minutes we have left, I'm going to hand back the quizzes for those who are here. Um, there is one person who didn't put a name on their quiz yesterday. I don't know if they're here. Um, if you didn't get a quiz back, you did write the quiz, please talk to me. I may have yours. And if you can show me your handwriting, I can give you my credit for it. I'm going to see it first. Um, Matthew's here. Thomas. is not here. Desiree. Sharon. I will also have the written assignment for you folks tomorrow, so you can start it over the weekend. Um, and yeah, otherwise, good luck in your other courses, because I imagine you have a lot of stuff due at the end of the semester. So. so.